to the HCW uh, YouTube channel and welcome back to the Indie Spotlight and welcome back to another Kamikaze review. Um, we're reviewing Kamikaze Live 41, um, which was this last Sunday, which would have been enough Sunday. It was the second Friday because the, the next one's on a Sunday. This is already beginning well. I've got man flu. Anyway, we are joined by the Inquisitor, uh, the real world champion and Mr. Wrestle Connect himself, Alex Connors. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm all good. I think I'm sounding much healthier than you are, although it has been going around lately. So I'm sure a number of our viewers are also feeling a bit under the weather. I hope you'll get better soon. Yeah, look, it, it's it's bad. Um, but, you know, I thought we can't um, prolong this. Um, and so we're going to go for something slightly different. It's not going to be me discussing a lot of what happened in the match. It's just going to be a general overview and we'll see how it does. Um, but yeah, so we're back at the dojo. Um, dojo is always packed. I brought um, a few people myself this time. Um, Frozzy from HCW came for the first time down, um, and my mate from HMV and his partner came down as well, um, and they had a merry good old time. Um, but we uh, will go straight into the event. We had yourself, Alex Connors, um, versus Coach Mahon. Yeah, um, I think I'll go through the details of this one at least. I remember. Uh... This one probably the best out of all of them, <laughs> viewing the action very up close and personal. Uh, it started with some shenanigans from the coach. He loves to give people a detention slip. Uh, he got the ring crew, um, Penny, one of the girls who helps with the ring crew, to come in and hand me a detention slip. Very rude. He tried to run some of the exercises he would do as a coach and use his whistle to try and deafen me. But before long, I think we saw a much grittier and determined coach. And I think we were all impressed. Uh, a suicide dive in the early goings, not the usual coach. Uh, and he went up top for a big elbow, but was caught with a belly-to-belly -belly off the top rope, which was pretty devastating. Maybe one of the uh, highlights of the night. Depends how you feel about that in the crowd. Um, and then before long, coach did fire back up. He did manage to hit that elbow off the top rope. He hit his coach cutter as well, his finishing manoeuvre. Um, but I managed to escape all of those, and he tried to brainbuster me, a reversal of fortune. Uh, but while I clung for dear life, for some reason, coach clashed into the referee, uh, and while the referee's back was turned, I hit him with a brainbuster of my own, clean as a whistle, and picked up the victory. Yeah, you hit him with a nice um, uh, kick to the uh, midsection as well. Very nice yeah, kick right. to the midsection. Just just above the belt, I believe yeah. it was. Just right in the bread basket, I think you might call it. Yeah. Uh, totally legal, totally normal. Um, yeah. And yeah, another victory in quite a long-running uh, streak against the 2.0 debutants. Yeah, and you liked on the, pre on the preview, I made sure they knew that you didn't lose to Ronnie G on a live show. Uh, Thank you. Because Thank you, you tried to uh, throw them shenanigans. Um, yeah, well, Coach deserved what was coming to him after making claims like that. Yeah, outrageous. Um, coach hit Dive as well, which was um, extraordinary. Um, he, he rose like a salmon, I want to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I think Coach is not just his high flying uh, and his agility, because he did some lucha rolling through the ropes and nice escapes out of the ring, as well as his dive and elbow drop. But also I think his strikes and aggression were much better than we've ever seen before. Uh, a real reason for coach to have to dig down deep and not just play the comedy like he normally does in his Star Chasers team, or Dream Chasers team, I should say. Um, and I think the crowd really enjoyed seeing this uh, grittier and aggressive coach. A uh, very good match. Yeah, it was a very gritty match. Uh, we're already two and a half stars. Um, you said um, you were very much in control from the majority of it, which you'd expect because uh, you're the veteran in the match. Um, you had like a Hanson Escalariot as well at one point, uh, which was very nice to see, followed like a bow and arrow kind of stretch. Um, but yeah, just a bit too much for Coach Mahon. Yeah, Coach has got a, a wonderful future ahead of him. He's got a lot to learn. Um, I think he started off really leaning into the comedy and entertaining the crowd, which he's very good at, but he really needed to bring out a more aggressive, more gritty more intense side of his game. I wasn't sure if he had that in him. Um, and here he displayed it, I think, for the first time. And it's a great step in a great direction for the yeah. coach. Um, and hopefully he does get more experience in singles matches because he's been obviously tagging with Ronnie a lot. So singles yeah. being uh, at the way side. Um, we will move on um, to a match between Sonny Noss and the returning Redacted. Um, yeah. 
So you may not be allowed to say it, yep. but uh, a good friend of mine. Uh, this is only the, the second match for TJ Sky, having come back at the last Pro Live show. Um, and this is the one I've seen the least of, so I'll try to do all the talking to save your voice. But obviously this was right after my match. I did jump on comms after this, but this is the one I missed. Uh, looks to me like a lot of fire and aggression from Sonny, and he really has got that um, just real passion, which the crowd love to see. Uh, but I believe TJ Sky went for working the leg. A dragon screw off yeah. the top was a big move in the match, uh, and he just really focused on the leg with ankle locks throughout and eventually picked up the win, I believe, with uh, more of a calf slicer. Um, yeah, calf brushing on the thing. Like, yeah. AJ Styles, if people are uh, more relevant to him. Um, what it start off with, as I said, because you were um, prior to getting out, um, I feel Sonny fell for the same trap that Coach did of trying to get the Carol, get the comedy con decided in um, with the cat ears. Um, yeah. He uh, redacted, uh, played up to it for a little bit, um, and then he just absolutely levered his leg for the whole match, basically. Um, which is smart tactic. Um, TJ, yeah, I'm going to say his name. I've said it 15 times now. Yeah. TJ's an experienced guy, and he picked up the win. Yeah, this was a real interesting moment. Uh, I think TJ Sky is one of the best wrestlers in the country. Um, and I'm not just saying that from, from a friendship bias. He's travelled, he's been around. Um, but the Kamikaze crowd aren't quite used to him again. So this one was a little bit quieter, a little bit of a deflating moment for the crowd because TJ, who a lot of them would maybe know as a fan favourite, has come back to Kamikaze with a mean streak. And um, he's obviously took advantage of a little bit of a less experienced Sonny Noss, who is a crowd favourite. And so this one did play out a little bit quieter, um, but it really showed TJ getting a little bit technical. He did also his fantastic offense with the 610 line yeah. salt, uh, power bomb as well that Sonny Noss barely kicked out of was fantastic. Um, yeah, so it's interesting to see whether TJ will keep up this mean streak uh, or revert back to a fan favorite in the future. But it seems like he's had enough of that and he's here to pick up some wins. And in fact, if I'm not mistaken, this is the first win he's picked up in front of your eyes. I believe so. I did check my database thing, and I, he had picked up a win at some point in front of my eyes. I don't know if it was I watched him on some kind of summit and saw him, but I can't remember him picking up a win. But um, I rated him who picked up a win at some point. So uh, second win for TJ that I've seen. First one I remember. Um, and also, that I can't remember who hit it, but someone hit a backcracker on the apron, which uh, yeah, it's not Noss the hit... smartest thing to do. <laughs> yeah. Sonny Noss hit a, a few great backstabbers in this match. He hit one on the apron. Um, he went for one and TJ held onto the ropes and Sonny mm. crashed into the turnbuckle hard. Um, and then Sonny hit another one later on, which looked like it could you know, win the match for him. But I just think he was a little bit slow and he was a little bit disorganized. And that's a strange word for a match, but yeah. sometimes he looked like he didn't know how to capitalize on his offense. And those breathers, they can kill your momentum and they can take the air out of the crowd a little bit. And Sonny just needed to be a little bit snappier when he had his offense going. Um, so yeah, beautiful manoeuvres, but he wasn't quite in full flow, and TJ Sky was, so he picked up the win. Yeah, definitely, and I really enjoyed this match, according to Murat, and Murat at three and quarter stars, so I really did enjoy the good old redacted return. Um, next up, we've got a match which I thought was going to go on a lot later than it did, um, which was Zero to Hero versus the um, the newly named House of Heritage. For people that don't know House of Heritage, it's Samuel Hughes, Will Stevens, and Kieran McQueen. And Zero to Hero is Maximus, Edgar, and Nathan Ollie. Um, this was... Um, a lot of it was Zero to Hero kind of outperformed, work, uh, uh, outworking House of Heritage for the start of the match. Um, and then it went to a kind of like an absolute cluster mess of dives and people just running in the ring and uh, hitting moves. Um, eventually, House of Heritage tried to pick out Edgar Adams as the weak link, which... Oh, yeah, out of them, I wouldn't think that would be the case, but they picked him out. Um, a lot of um, cheating in the corner by House of Heritage. Um, the ref just didn't see it. Um, Adam's got a hot tag into a Koru, which is kind of his first proper action um, in a while, because obviously he's been injured with his, um, yeah. his ankle, I believe. Yeah, uh, and, and the whole leg has been in a cast when he first did it, so this is a, a miraculous recovery to be wrestling again in under a year. Yeah. Um, but. Obviously, it has been several months since he's been in a, in a ring. Exactly. Then they hit... Um, everyone loves the Tower of Doom. So, um, the Tower of Doom spot was there. I can't remember who got the full brunt of it, but um, 
everyone was involved at that point. Um, Edgar hit a flying headbutt, which I've never seen him pull out in my life. Yeah, me neither. I, even on commentary for this match, I thought he was going for the frog splash, called that he was mm. going for the frog splash and he hit the headbutt. That was straight after the Tower of Doom. I believe yeah. Samuel Hughes was the top of the Tower of Doom. Uh, Max and Nate tried to give him the double suplex and then Will and Kieran came in for the double power bomb. And so Edgar was left unattached and came immediately in with a flying headbutt as soon as the Tower of Doom landed. So that was a very exciting moment in the match, but did not pick up the win. Yeah, and then um, Will Stevens then distracted the ref with some kind of like cat shiny keys kind of thing where he just was pointing at the floor and the ref just didn't know what was going on. Um, and then they ended up picking up a win. They hit like a tri- I can't remember what the finisher was, but it was like a triple finisher uh, where they were all yeah. involved in it. it. It was it was a bit disconjoined, but it had a real nice element of Samuel Hughes hitting his uh, what I would call the gig and tonic or the uh, reverse yeah. pile driver, yeah, yeah. and then bouncing the opponent up into Will Stevens hitting a, a normal pile driver, uh, which we've seen Will Stevens finish with before as well. Um, so Will Stevens essentially lifting Sam straight off the back. Uh, and Kieran came in with a punt yeah. midway, um, which was maybe a delay because the double power drivers were beautiful. I'd have just gone yeah. power driver, power driver. That's going to put anybody away. Um, Zero to Hero also hit their finisher at some point. We've seen before that triple, almost a flatliner 3D yeah. with the flapjack, flatliner and cutter all working in unison. That was really good. Um, the f- opening of this match was so fast paced it was uh, really enjoyable but I did think it got uh, quite chaotic at the end and I did think Zero to Hero cost themselves in a number of ways uh, when Max first got that host tag he uh, you know knocked somebody down and then he asked the crowd if they wanted to see Nate and in my opinion that was too late to be asking the crowd and playing to the crowd it kills the momentum of your team and of the crowd themselves you've got to just keep that fire keep hitting people hitting people You've been on that apron, you've been building up that aggression, you should just be letting it fly and the crowd will come along with you. You shouldn't need to ask them that late in the match after Edgar had taken that you know, horrendous beat down in the corner and finally made a tag. So it was very chaotic at the end and that is obviously going to lean into House of Heritage, the experience and the rule breakers. Um, I enjoyed seeing two trios who are actual trios. Very exciting. Two factions who had combination offense who know each other and work together i think that's really good for kamikaze kamikaze has mainly been built off singles matches and they would still have some great ones of them but it's nice to see these units and this unit warfare but i do think both units need a lot of work obviously it's the first time for house of heritage it's only the second i think trio match for zeros to heroes so the ending got very messy, and that's where House of Heritage is going to take advantage. Yeah, I read it two and a half stars. Um, I said it was a bit of a cluster. Um, but it was nice to see House of Heritage pick up a win, because I thought they... I mentioned on the, pod, uh, the preview, I thought they were going to win, but I just I was worried it was going to be like a one-and-done thing where you'd never see them again. But they had yeah. shirts, so it'd be really yeah. awkward if that was the case. <laughs> yeah, very exciting. You've got to assume that that connection... I also... I, I don't know either. I wasn't sure whether this was a one-off to unite against the uh, 2.0 guys but yeah this looks like it's a permanent faction a permanent stable and i'm very excited to see what they do next and they will come up again in this very review yeah um but check that out um, by check it out just continue watching um this was an interval at this point we came back to a match that sounded absolutely perfect on paper um we had Chantal jordan um probably one of the mainstays of kamikaze dojo first person a lot of people think so when you think of the dojo versus luke douglas who's probably the second person everyone thinks of when they think of the dojo this match came out of nowhere as well it's not a match you expected from the matches in previous shows you just didn't expect this to be a match that put on um, yeah. but it was a big match for both of them um Chantal, obviously he's kind of like the face of the dojo and luke's kind of falling at the wayside a bit where he's been fighting the newer guys he's not really been popping up the main order and this was a big match for him um so this started off with a bit of camaraderie from both of them i didn't expect it um grappling strike battles of which um chantal was on top for a lot of which um it's weird to say you can't expect because luke's a big guy but chantal is a striker um luke then hit a massive strike out of nowhere to kind of take it down um, the chops were brutal. Like, they were sillily brutal. Absolutely. Um, then Luke did um, a good old Adam Cole special of um, it looks like he's going to kick her in the back and then goes into a headlock, uh, yeah. which I do love that kind of thing. 
then there were striking but that, between each other. That's an interesting moment because that really teased the crowd and it really antagonised yeah. the crowd. But he didn't actually, from what I remember, cheat or do no. anything to Chantel underhanded. And like you said, it opened with camaraderie. It ended with camaraderie without spoiling the winner just yet. There was a handshake at the end. Um, yeah, so even though Luke obviously wasn't getting on with the crowd or our terrible GM, Carl, yep. he seemed to be very much respectful of Chantel. They are 1.0 through and through. Um, they've been kamikaze through and through for most of their lives. And they're, they've had, I believe, six previous singles matches, and this was the seventh. So the respect was really high in this match. Uh, yeah. And personally, I don't know how it falls on the rating system. My personal match of the night, this one. Yeah, I did enjoy this, um, which we will get to. Obviously, um, there's a bias to all Chantel from me. Um, <laughs> Luke, out of nowhere, and I'm loving that he's, he's brought this into his arsenal. He's brought the stroke into his arsenal, the Jeff Jarrett special. It's one of my favourite finishes, just because it's yeah. ludicrous. <laughs> um, and I love Jeff Jarrett. Um Chantal, the uh, she still uh, she, we uh, say this every show, but she hasn't got a name for the finisher. But um, it had like a dead eye variant on the um, the apron. Yes, don't don't you worry. Problem solved. Oh. Inside scoop. Tea bag driver. Good God. What did he say? Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, um, that was never the name I was thinking you were going to say. Um, no, that's direct from the uh, bad girl herself. Tea bag driver. Bag driver. I, I demanded a name for commentary that night, and that is what I got. I might stop it here. Uh hey, you. Yeah, you. Do you like this video? There is a button. It's a very sexy button. It says subscribe on it. I wish I could click on it, but YouTube won't let me. Damn fuckers. Um, Luke Douglas then hit a super kick. Um, then Chantel hit a massive move on Luke, and Luke kicked out of one. Um, yeah. Just popped out of one. It was like the old school New Japan defiance kind of like kick out of one. But it was kind of like the last hurrah yeah. for him. Like, I'll kick out with one. Bring it on Chantel, and then she absolutely kicked his face off. Yes, and, and that would bring the contest to a close. Luke also hit a move. Uh, named the Alex Connor's favourite move, Tiger Flosion, his double underhook spin out, which I absolutely love. Uh, but he never managed to get the 21st century breakdown. So that's probably the difference yeah. with that ending there uh, going in Chantel's favour. Um, me and Luke obviously have uh, shared a bit of camaraderie ourselves as well recently because there's so many factions coming up. Maybe Team Rate Wrestle is uh, starting to manifest. That's right. Um, the nose, that is, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, this, this was a fantastic, fantastic match. The strikes were so hard hitting. The counters were so smooth because they know each other so well. They were so well prepared. I did hope we'd see more unique and new offense um, because they have faced each other so much. And we did have from Luke the stroke. And I think from Chantel, her combinations were mixed up a little bit. She normally does this one yeah. double hip attack, drop kick, and uh, she's trying to do this same set of offense, European throw out, Meteora. She tried to mix up these combinations to throw Luke off. That was really interesting to watch. I really enjoyed that. So, yeah, this I thought was a, a great match from start to finish. Show of respect at the start and the end. Um, and, yeah, normally with Luke Douglas, he is wrestling the 2.0 guys and very much part of the 1.0, 2.0 rivalry. Uh, so it's a real treat we got to see this match and a real high quality, best of uh, the country kind of match that you won't see every day. Yeah, uh, we're ready for an I was really enjoyed it. Um, great finish, um, and it was nice to see them actually kind of have a good moment where it wasn't one of them just hit turns and the other and then leaves. Um, bit of respect. Um, we move on to a match which was um, it was weird to see. Um, you had JC, um, a fan favourite versus Ronnie G, a fan favourite. So it was kind of like um, a one-upmanship of who can get the the crowd behind them. There was a lot of shenanigans at the start. Like I'm talking a lot of shenanigans. Yeah. Um, uh, it became. And a that's the of... difference when you've got two yeah. entertainers who are out there having fun without a person who's there to you know, pick up the pace without somebody who doesn't care what the crowd thinks, such as me in the opening or TJ in the second match, um, then those shenanigans go on even longer. And I'm sure the crowd actually enjoyed it. Um, yeah, they are two just entertainers. Both of them really are very entertaining to the crowd. They love, you know, picking the crowd up, win or lose. Yeah. 
Um, Ronnie was working overseas for a lot of the uh, thing. He had the upper hand. Um, he's the more confident guy, obviously, because he's been winning a lot of matches. Uh, Jay had a fight back. Um, then Ronnie kind of just cut that out. He started hitting his usual spiel of the people's elbow. Um, near fall on that, a big near fall. Um, he went for a Claymore kick. Didn't happen. And then I blinked, and out of nowhere, JC hit a curb stomp and won. That's how it felt. It was just out yeah. of nowhere. <laughs> I believe he countered the Claymore into a yeah. power bomb, which I think was was pretty impressive. Um, but yeah, you're right. The ending came very rapidly with the uh, curb stomp. Um, it was really once the match got serious, it just got quick yeah. and it just, it just rapidly fired towards the end. Both people just back and forth, very crisp, very clean. Um, I'd say probably from JC the the best match I think I've seen of his because. Uh, he was so crisp and clean. He's obviously been down at the dojo working really hard. He hit a drop kick, which wasn't terrible for the first time in JC's yeah, career. Yeah, so, no, it sounds bad, but yeah, it was probably the best huge, drop kick I've seen. Huge round of applause for yeah. that non-terrible drop kick from JC, but I really enjoyed the curb stomp petition. I've been seeing him work on it's that well. and try and hit it from different places, and it looked absolutely devastating, so that's really good. It suits his size, and sometimes JC hasn't always done moves that suit his body type, but that really is one that I think is going to bring him a lot of success. Um, but I actually found this a surprising result, because Ronnie G, I thought, had been on a bit of a tear recently, and he's picked up more wins, I believe, than JC. Um, so, yeah, a really big moment for JC when it comes to momentum. Yeah, um, already two and a half stars. It was, it was good. Um, JC is a big match for him, big win for him. Uh, Ronnie will bounce back, because he's Ronnie G. Um, yeah. And at least no one cheated. Uh, which yep. you normally expect from the face-to-face matches nowadays that one of them will turn on the other one. Um, yeah, and you, you did think there was moments here where you thought, is this going to be a, one dig too far or one joke too far and someone's going to snap? But no, it was uh, perfectly you know, sportsmanship, perfectly right down the middle from both people. And uh, yeah, the crowd very much enjoyed seeing two of their favourites go head-to-head. Yeah. Um, and we will move on to uh, the main match prior to the Rumble, um, which was actually my match of the night, um, which, surprisingly, when you have Luke and Chantal as a match, uh, we yeah. had George Lydon versus um, Zach Walker. Zach Walker came out, and George was in the ring, and um, first time we've heard Zach Walker speak. Um, and I feel like, you know, uh, I mentioned this to you, um, I mentioned, oh, Kamikaze, you're doing a smart thing at the moment. Like, people that are fighting George Lydon are just getting a total match because it's George Lydon which he was happening yeah. a lot. So this match was an untitled match until it yeah. wasn't. An untitled match for George Lloyd, which I do like that aspect now that it used yeah. to be a thing in Kamikaze that anyone that faces the, the reigning champ of a George, Luke, Chantel, it'd just be a title match. Um, whereas it sounds weird, but um, Zach doesn't deserve a title match in per se. He deserves to face the... Like, he deserves to fight someone, but obviously he's not won his matches, so he'd, to throw him in the actual title opportunity would make no sense. Um, Joe, uh, Zach kind of mentioned that you know I lost to Alex Connors, I lost to, but it was a good match. I lost to Man like the Reese, but it was a good match. I deserve. Yeah, a I believe shot. Zach said he lost to two of the best wrestlers yeah. in Europe. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which then? Think he maybe either of those wrestlers would get a title shot, but no. Yeah. So you, the man that won the title, didn't get a title shot. No. Um, but yeah, so he went for the relentless title, which was insane. Um, but then George kind of calmed him down and went, you, you can have a live shot match. <laughs> you know, yeah, I thought that was very interesting um, because George talked about how hard he'd worked for the Relentless Belt and said Zach could have a pro-live title match. But uh, in my experience here at Kamikaze, George has just been so synonymous with the pro-live title. I thought maybe he'd value that even higher because that is his belt yeah. and the Relentless one has, has been and gone. Um, obviously, he has it now, but it's it's definitely been around a few more people, whereas Pro Live Belt has been glued to George for forever. Um, so it's interesting to see where he values those two titles. Um, and yeah, I guess we can't blame Kamikaze too much because it was George who decided to put this on the line. It was a non-title match as announced. Um, and yeah, a very brave and bold move from Zach. Yeah, he didn't hold down. He said, if I can hang with two of the best in Europe, I can hang with you and I might well pick up a win. Give me a title shot. That's 
forward, it's brave, it's bold. It's what you want to see from somebody who's only in their third match. It's that kind of confidence. Yeah, maybe. Just throwing it out there. George might value the relentless one a bit more because he knows he's not the true Kamikaze Pro Live champion. Um, it makes sense. It makes sense. We'll kick it off. Um, back and forth. Back and forth style um, between both guys, which I expected at the start, because if you're going to have a bit of momentum, Zach, do it at the start yeah. match. Yeah, pause. Actually, let's not jump over this straight away, because we'll even remember that Mr. Coach Mahan declared that if he beat me in the first match, he would be the real pro-life champion. So it's not just George having that in the back of the head. I think the whole roster knows it, and probably that's why Zach felt confident enough to challenge for the belt, because he knows George is living on borrowed time. And Coach... If he'd have won match one, maybe he would be the real pro-live champion. But and also, we won't find out what's going to happen because um, Carl has announced that he's on high eights. Uh... <laughs> Carl, hashtag high eights. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't know, where... don't know where, what the leaves. don't know who's the GM for that time period. I don't know if no. you've, uh, you've got anything you, uh, you want to do. No. That period. Currently unannounced, I find it hard to imagine it could be anybody worse than Carl. So uh, we we hope and pray that the new GM might be able to uh, have call it right down the middle, as Rate Wrestle always does, as yep. you've proven time and time again. Let's inject some Rate Wrestle into him, yeah. <laughs> That sounds exciting to me, and I'm uh, sure it would be a lot fairer. Yeah. I'm always down the middle. Anyway, back and forth, George and uh, Walker. George then took control, which you expected. A um, lot more experience. Hit a massive chop. He went a bit to the well, though. Um, went for a chop and Zach outside. As soon as I saw it, when he was leaning on the post, I went, he's going he's gonna to hit that post. Wham. Oh, it, it never works out for any wrestler. <laughs> um, big suplex. They had a double down in the ring. Um... Zach hit a tornado DDT, not in the ring, on the outside. Yeah, from a suicide dive. Yeah. Through the ropes, head first went Zach, caught George under the armpit, DDT, tornado style. What a move. Yeah, they just about got in the ring. Um, George, uh, Zach then went for a swanton. George got his knees up because if anyone's going to reverse an aerial offense, it's going to be George. Um, George was then hitting some massive moves. I think he kind of realised this man has just hit a tornado did it on the answer. I need to finish this. Um, recent matches, George has been kind of cocky because he know he can be like he's been doing his like his poses when he's playing. Yeah. This match was none of that. Um, he hit a tiger bomb, which is synonymous with him at the moment. Um, Four fifty, where he landed on his feet. Uh, then, which was an incredible. Sh- like a Brian Cage esque, he suplexed him from outside the ring. In yeah, no fantastic ha- not, power no, from George. Just deadlift. Yeah, and uh, I think George has really entered his all Japan pro wrestling phase. Mm-hmm. He's not only having five star matches in his uh, idolization of Masawa, Kawada, and Kabashi, but he's also hitting all of their offense. The Tiger Driver you said is synonymous. He hit a Shining Wizard. He hit Kawada kicks. Lots of Kabashi chops. Um, he's really embodied the All Japan phase. He's wearing the green now, which I yeah. love to see as well. Um, and really, everyone who's ever watched All Japan knows you've got to be tough as hell to be an All Japan champion. And that's what George is really modelling himself of with this Kamikaze title reign. And uh, Zach was very quick and nimble, but he didn't quite have the strength. His chest was red raw yeah, in the opening few minutes. Um... Yeah, by, by minute two already. So he was taking <sighs> movement. Then um, there was a Canadian destroyer at one point because, you know, we all love a good old Canadian. Um, George then just had enough. Um, Larry did him Stan Hansen style through lock, as yeah. I mentioned earlier, but he, he put some venom in that. Um, hit a bomb and then hit another massive Larry just to sum it up at the end to pick up the win. Um, I rated it four stars. Really, really fast paced aggression from George. And yeah. yeah, he hit that doctor bomb like from the side. Yeah. Another another staple of 80s and 90s Japan. Um, I'm really loving this run of George and bringing those influences back, who, which have sort of died off a little bit. Not all the newer, younger 2.0 guys have studied their four pillars of heaven, and it's really good to see George setting that tone. Um, yeah, Zach Walker has really been an absolute phenom in his first few matches. An incredible run of matches. He hasn't won any of them, but he's had probably three of the best first three matches yeah. in anybody's career ever. It can Simply only, put. it can't get like, like when you get people like yourself, man like the race and then George, you can't, it like, 
you can look at it and go, I might not be fighting someone like as high as that now, I might be right. And they'll probably get thrown against Luke and then we'll Chantel and be like, <laughs> yeah, it's very interesting as well to think at what point then is Zach's actual level to pick up a win or carry yeah. a match. So we know right now that those matches have been excellent, but Zach's having to escalate his level to the level of myself, Doris, and George Lydon. Mm -hmm. If Zach comes up against JC, Ronnie G, maybe Coach, how hard does Zach go? Is he someone who just has the energy and rebounds it back? depending on how hard it comes at him. Or will he go and have five-star bangers against every person on the roster? I'm very excited to see because he has surprised me and impressed me three times in a row. Yeah, very, very impressive matchups. Um, but George retains the title. Um, moving on to repercussions of the title, we end with the uh, Roulette Rumble. Um, we've described this a lot of the time. Roulette Rumble, it's a rumble, but the wrestlers don't know when they're coming out because the crowd pick one... Um, pick a number out even i got to pick one out um so it pretty much if i remember it started with um oh, i can't remember who it started with it's gone out of my head it started it's... with sonny Noss, and then hilariously we had kira mcqueen followed by luke douglas who decided to form on alliance and yeah. then and as you mentioned and i cannot stress this enough because i hate it these are names are pulled out of a hat live by the crowd in front of the crowd so you don't even know when you're coming out uh, on the day you know when you go to a to a rumble normally the crowd might not know who's next but you've got your number at the start of the show you know when you're coming out you can strategize you can see who's in the ring a few people before these are pulled out and you have five seconds to get out the curtain and get in the ring believe it or not we then had every member of house of heritage <laughs> drawn and poor sonny nos who's was limping walked in with a cane uh yeah. A makeshift cane, I believe, made from a plunger um, because he couldn't hardly walk after his match with TJ, who targeted the leg. He was first in, and then he had Luke Douglas and all three members of House of Heritage, and uh, eventually they just dumped him out of the ring. Yeah, it was like all a pack of wolves, wasn't it? It was a yeah. pack of wolves, and he had no chance. Um... Oh, you haven't notes on this rumble because the rumbles are rumbles, everything happens. Uh... So there was a few debuts in this match. Um... Danny Sky, I believe his name was, uh, was one yeah. of them, which is the guy I picked out, so he's now sponsored by me forever. <laughs> I gave him his debut. That's the way I Perfect. look at it. Look um, forward to seeing him on, uh, on future reviews and previews. Yeah. Um, uh, we also had Tiger Shah making a debut. Exactly, yeah. I'm going to load up this because um, it's easier to have a look on Cage Match when it comes to a lot of people debuting. There's people in this match. We had Alex Dean. Um, that was a debut as well. Yeah, uh, Blake Violet coming back after a return from the match with yourself. Um, Chantal, obviously, Coach Mahon, Danny Sky, we've mentioned, Edgar Adams, um, Harris Hussein. Um, another debut. Another debut. JC, Kira McQueen, Laurie Neal, not a debut. Not a debut. The referee who eliminated yeah. Luke Douglas. <laughs> and then was subsequently eliminated. Good. Um, Maximus Agoro, yeah. Nate, Ronnie G, Sean Devine um, was back once again um, for his uh, his Royal Rumble, Royal Rumble appearance, his Roulette Rumble appearance. Um, the Ring Gremlin um, had the best part of the Roulette Rumble where he eliminated himself. Yes, and he also uh, came to the ring and did a very familiar uh, offense that reminded me of somebody. Yeah, um, the Ring Gremlin. One of, one of the Ring Gremlin's <laughs> idols. Uh, yeah, let's quickly fly through just some of these people. Uh, Pat Harris Hussein, that was his debut. Very hard-hitting, uh, bigger guy for the 2.0 guys. Um, Alex Dean, very charismatic, very technically sound. Tiger Shah, my personal uh, shining example. I thought he was really athletic, really fast-paced, and I believe he ended up eliminating Alex Connors somehow. Uh, yeah, Laurie came in, he eliminated Luke Douglas, but me and Will Stevens got revenge. He was out very quickly. That's our head referee, for those who don't know. Um, I believe that's all the debuts that I've covered there. Danny Sky as well. Uh... Oh, Danny Sky, freakishly strong, country boy strong, but also absolutely fearless. Um, throws his body into anything, but uh, was mostly in the match when I wasn't, so can't say too much about his performance, but uh, very excited to see what he does next as well. Yep, as a HCW sponsored athlete. Uh, yeah. <laughs> unless he loses, then he's nothing to do with it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, 
But yeah, it came down to um, a big win, um, we would say, for um, a certain red-headed rascal. Yeah, what an advantage having all three members of House of Heritage yeah, in no. through the through the whole Rumble <laughs> from start to finish. They were there for each other, and the Rumble boiled down, I believe, to uh, two members from House of Heritage and oh, two Steve members of Sam, yeah. Zero to Hero. Yeah. Um, Edgar and Kieran had been eliminated, but the and they've been eliminated earlier. Yeah. But the other two of each team still battling it out, and I believe it was. Possibly Nate, who managed to eliminate Will Stevens, and Sam immediately snuck up behind him during that elimination, capitalised, and got the win. Um, which is very interesting because I was under the impression that House of Heritage, Zeros to Heroes rivalry was absolutely not dead and still had a way to go. And now all of a sudden, one of them's probably uh, facing George on the next show as he's earned himself a title shot. You know, and will House of Heritage help him pick up a win in that title shot? And where will Zeros to Heroes be? Yeah, and um, I'm assuming because it's Samuel Hughes' um, first time on the poster for ages um, for Kamikaze Pro Live 42. He's been moaning about it for like probably about a year, and he's finally on there where he couldn't be denied, really. Um, which is going to be Sunday, 3rd of March, um, at the dojo yeah. on a Sunday, which is great. Um, kicking off at 4 o'clock. Yeah, very exciting for that. Um, yeah, I love shows that are happening here in the dojo just next to the custard factory in Digworth. it's right next to the train station it's really a great venue but it's also really easy to get to uh, but we still have stories to unfold because in between now and then we do have kamikaze pro uh, a main show kamikaze pro over the top um and that's happening just a week on friday depending on when this goes out which i don't know uh, this will probably be out monday uh, so maybe sorry. in five days from when you're watching this perhaps yeah. people at home um, and that's got Zeros to Heroes and House of Heritage and myself and Luke Douglas and Chantel, uh, a lot of the names we've just discussed, um, appearing there. So that could well lead to some matches that will then take place at that Pro Live. Yeah, big match as well that's been announced. Um, I believe it was announced yesterday of recording. Uh, winner enters the OTT Rumble number 20. Um, loser enters number one. And it's a whole dojo aspect of it. So you've got Chantel, Luke Douglas, Nate Rowley, Sammy Hughes, Zach Walker, and Alex Connors. Um, I said on Twitter, which I said, I don't want you to lose this match, but I've seen you win by an Iron Man situation. So, uh, <laughs> That's it's not... true. And there was over 30 people yep. in that rumble, and this is only 20. So it would be a breeze, will not it? Yeah. yeah, 20 people. Just no give problem. Just the shot now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what more do I need to do to earn it, to be honest? I, I beat people, and they get title shots. So, um, realistically, I'm so excited for a period of time without our corrupt and evil Carl in charge. He is on hi hiatus, uh, so I'm looking forward to see how that shakes things up for the next Pro Live. Yeah, I just, I, something worse could happen now. <laughs> so, I don't, I don't know. Wait until I it hope happens. We're not but... Out of the frying pan and into the fire, let's hope it's somewhere more exciting for us all. Excellent. But yep, that's the end of the review. Um, three stars are out of the rumble for anyone that cares. Um, I enjoyed it. It was fun. There was a lot of debuts. I was drinking. Um, by the time, it was a good time. Um, so get the tickets for the next Kamikaze live show, the next Over the Top show, which is coming out a... What's the exact date on that Friday? It is the 16th. Um, two banging shows. Kamikaze is back. Um, and hopefully it stays getting more main shows for people like yourselves that can um, get on yeah. to them. Yeah, um, I mean, I've heard the plans for this year for Kamikaze. I can't reveal or spoil any of them, but if you were previously a Kamikaze fan and you've missed, you know, over COVID, I know the shows have been a bit more sparse. This year is really the comeback year. So you want to get in at the start of January and see the storylines that are going on, see what's unfolding and get plugged back in because it's going to be a really busy year for Kamikaze this year. Yeah, and if you follow the dojo, um, they've got a second ring at the training group. So instantly, war games. War games. War games. <laughs> oh, no, that wasn't worth doing. Uh, but yeah, as usual, like and subscribe, follow Alex everywhere. We've had the mirror on screen, which he, he doesn't want on the screen, but I keep forgetting to change it. Inquisitor oh, Connors, at Inquisitor yeah. Connors on Instagram. That's where the highlights are, much more exciting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's it from myself. Thank you all, and we'll see you next time. And have a good night. Oh, yeah.